Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a folk horror film, Kumari. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the voice of a little girl asking her granny to tell her a story. The granny then talks about a goddess who decided to come visit Earth. There, she fell in love with a human and had many children with him. However, these children were neither gods nor humans, and it led to people getting scared of them. These demigod children also had special powers, which they eventually used for evil deeds, and it pissed off the goddess. She cast her children away, after which she went back to her abode. However, when humans came to know about the powers of these demigods, they started worshipping them, and it led to total destruction. Back to reality, the granny says she's going to talk about a land that was cursed by man's greed. We meet an orphan boy who lives in a local village. There, he spots a sage who is giving out prices for some precious gems that the villagers have brought. The sage spots orphan boy and tells him to go away, but the sage's wife likes him and decides to feed him some mangoes. They talk about a forgotten child of the ancient goddess, and then orphan boy decides to leave for the forests to meet this demigod. He eventually makes it inside a cave and calls out to the demigod. He hears a loud roar and he finally meets him. The demigod gives orphan boy some gems in exchange for some food that he has brought. Later, the sage smells some mangoes on his wife's hands and realizes that she was feeding orphan boy. This pisses him off, so he goes to take a dip in the pond to cleanse himself. He finds orphan boy taking a bath inside it, so he angrily kills the boy. However, this alerts the demigod, so he places a curse upon the village that starts to afflict everyone inside it. Even the sage starts to suffer from the effects of the curse, as can be seen on his body. After a lot of consideration, the sage decides to call upon the powers of a demon lord in order to counter the curse. He eventually succeeds after making a big sacrifice. Twelve generations later, we meet a girl named Kumari, who engages in a cheerful sequence of singing and dancing. She is shown to be very popular in the village, as she is actively participating in all the village activities. One day, Kumari is summoned by her elders, who are quite fond of her. There we learn that Kumari's dad died when she was a child. Her uncle has been taking care of her since then, and now he has arranged a marriage for her with a reputed family. However, Kumari's brother shows up and says that she should do as she pleases. The uncle scolds the brother and says he should learn to take care of himself rather than Kumari. Later, Kumari has a chat with her brother about her marriage, but he says that she is his only solace here in the village. He also mentions that he made an inquiry about Kumari's groom, Shady, and has learned that he is from a cursed land with a suspicious family. The brother reasons that this is why he was against the marriage, but Kumari doesn't see it as a hindrance. Eventually, Kumari says yes to Shady, and the marriage kicks off. Her brother isn't too happy to see this, but he doesn't make a fuss. Kumari is sad to leave her family, and becomes even more suspicious when an old lady stops the car on the way. She warns Kumari against going to Shady's cursed land, but Shady's family simply ignores the old lady and proceeds with the journey. After a long journey, Kumara finally enters her new home and is greeted by a religious ceremony. Later, Kumari is told to give some medicines to Shady, so she takes them inside. Shady ignores Kumari and goes to sleep after taking his medicine, so she becomes a bit curious about the family. The next day, Kumari comes across a restricted forest area, where she spots orphan boy with a mango. However, she is stopped by her sister-in-law, who takes her away from the forest. The sister-in-law mentions what happened with Orphan Boy and the Demigod and warns Kumari against entering the restricted area, otherwise Shady's family will get upset. At night, Kumari has a nightmare and wakes up next to Shady. She tries to bond with him, so he reassures her that she won't have nightmares anymore. The next day, Kumari spots Shady chilling with some children and finally gets to see his soft side. She is pleased by this, so she writes to her brother, saying that she is happy there. One day, some of the villagers have a chat with the village elder and mention that they've been facing issues while sowing and reaping the crops. One of the farmers believes that village elder and his family are simply scamming them while also taking the highest share of the yield. Shady tries to give some advice, but is kicked by village elder, who says he should take care of his own mental issues first. At night, Kumari asks Shady what's wrong with him, and he reveals that he has always been shunned away by his family. It turns out that only Shady's brother, Bulky, is respected here, and nobody likes him, even his own mother. Shady goes on to lament that his uselessness has eventually made everyone call him crazy. Shady recalls a memory where he was mercilessly beaten up by his own teacher, simply for enjoying a dance performance. This led Shady to burn his teacher to ashes later on. Basically, Shady has an evil alter ego that he must suppress by drinking medicines, which is why he has trouble sleeping at night. 
Kumari feels bad, so she gives Shady a hug and reassures him that she is here for him now. Another musical sequence kicks off, where Kumari and Shady start to bond with each other. The people of the village are still wary of Shady, but Kumari motivates him to carry on. One day, Kumari gets curious again and visits the restricted demigod area. She spots Orphan Boy once more and lets her curiosity get the better of her. Kumari follows Orphan Boy inside the forest, but then she bumps into a mysterious witch who tells her that she is pregnant. Witch also says that Kumari's child is in grave danger and only the demigod is capable of saving her. Kumari rushes back home but becomes weak. The local doctor arrives and says that Kumari is pregnant. It upsets Bulky, but village elder says that this is a good omen and walks away. Kumari is a little skeptical, but Shady tells her to be happy because Bulky hasn't been able to conceive a child with his wife even after years of marriage. This means that Shady will finally be respected by his family after the birth of Kumari's child. One night, Kumari wakes up alone in bed and looks around for Shady. She eventually finds him, but he has chopped off two of his fingers because he thinks that he has become the new lord. The next day, Bulky ridicules Shady for being crazy, but he truly believes he's the new lord. Even Village Elder agrees to this, so Bulky gets angry and runs away to his mistress for some hormone therapy. She tells him that he should please the demigod if he wants to remain head of the household. Now, sister-in-law tells Kumari that she chooses not to have a child, because Shady's family plans to sacrifice the firstborn child of this generation. It turns out, the sacrifice the sage made generations ago was that of his own child, whom he had forcefully taken away to offer to the demon lord. A flashback shows us how the child was taken away by the demon lord, thus allowing the demigod's curse to be lifted. However, in order to continue using the demon lord's powers, the family will need to sacrifice a child from this generation. Kumari refuses to believe this, but then sister-in-law takes her to a secret spot. There, Kumari is shown a rotting body, which is revealed to be the sage, still alive as part of the curse. Sister-in-law tells Kumari that she must use the demigod's powers to counter the demon lord, but village elder is listening in on the conversation. The next day, sister-in-law is found dead inside the well, and it is strongly implied that village elder has killed her. Kumari realizes that she needs to act fast, so she sneaks out of her house at night and enters the demigod's forest. Witch is shown practicing a ritual ceremony, but she stops upon sensing Kumari's presence. She reassures Kumari that the demigod will protect her child and offers to give her protection through a summoning spell. Witch warns Kumari that there's no going back if she summons the demigod, but she decides to go ahead with the spell because she has no other option. Now, Witch and Kumari enter a creepy cave, after which, Kumari makes her way forward. Witch chants a spell, then the demigod approaches Kumari and senses the child growing inside her. He proceeds to give her a figure and leaves after that. Witch tells Kumari that this figure has the power of Witch's tribe, so she must bury it and never dig it up. Kumari does as Witch says and buries the figure. Tragedy and sickness befall the village and everyone starts to panic. However, Village Elder reassures them that Shady is going to save everyone because he is the new lord. The villagers bow down to Shady, and then Village Elder tells him that these are the very same people who used to call him a madman. Village Elder goes on to explain that fear is all you need to get people to follow you. Meanwhile, Bulky is told by his mistress that he needs to act fast before the demigod comes for him. Now, Shady and Village Elder perform some rituals to save the village from the demigod. However, Bulky sets out on a mission in the middle of the night to enter the demigod's cave. Suddenly, a snake appears and bites village elder, killing him in the process. Even Bulky is attacked and killed by the demigod, so only Shady is left as the patriarch of the family. Time passes by, and Kumari is now seven months pregnant. Shady feels it's only a matter of time before he can make the sacrifice, but then, a fire breaks out inside his house. Shady sees this as a challenge and tries to figure out what to do to counter the demigod. He decides to torture the same farmer who had opposed village elder earlier regarding the crops. The farmer tells Shady that he should confront Witch and her tribe instead of attacking the poor and innocent. Shady asks the sage for advice but is told not to challenge the demigod because he cannot defeat this power. Despite the warning, Shady goes ahead and attacks Witch's village. A brutal massacre follows, where tons of innocent people are killed without rhyme or reason. Shady tries to act smart in front of Witch, but she simply taunts him and laughs at his smelly face. She goes on to say that the demigod has made a promise to Kumari, and it makes Shady angry. Suddenly, darkness surrounds the forest and Shady can hear the demigod roaring around him. He eventually spots the demigod on top of the trees and threatens him. However, his men take him away and they go back to the village. 
Now, Shady confronts Kumari and scolds her for betraying him. However, Kumari says that she will do whatever it takes to keep her child safe. Shady doesn't like this and says their child must be sacrificed to keep the village safe. He finally lets his alter ego take over and orders his men not to let Kumari outside her room. Time passes by and then the mistress comes to Shady to seduce him. He sees through her tactics and confronts her for misleading his brother to his death. However, the mistress simply says that nobody will be able to save Shady as he is too far gone. The next day, the brother comes to meet Kumari but learns how she is being mistreated by Shady. He angrily goes to confront Shady in front of his men and openly humiliates him. This leads to a fierce battle between Kumari's brother and husband. The brother gains the upper hand for a bit. But then, Shady cheats by using a shovel and kills him in cold blood. Kumari learns about this and breaks down into tears while Shady's mom watches from a distance. Later, the mom enters Kumari's room and tells her that God will definitely show her the way forward. However, Kumari scolds her and says that she shouldn't have to tolerate any further torture just for the sake of gods who will not help her. At night, Kumari goes to meet the sage, who says that everyone in the village is cursed and suffering because of the sins committed by him in the past. However, the sage says that the demon lord must be defeated by the demigod, who wants revenge for what happened to Orphan Boy. Time passes by, and it's time for Kumari to give birth to her child. She struggles and endures the pain, while Shady simply sits back and waits for the baby to be born. Kumari eventually gives birth to her child, so Shady begins his demonic ritual. Meanwhile, which in her tribe also start their own ritual. Kumari tries to escape with her child, but is caught by Shady, who knocks her out and proceeds with his ritual. He summons the demon lord with his blood and waits for his appearance. Slowly, the demon lord appears and flexes his disgusting face. Shady bows down in fearful subjugation, and then we see Kumari, who quickly wakes up from her injury. The demon lord makes his way to the child, and a tense sequence follows. Luckily, the demigod appears and confronts the demon lord. Shady tries to stop the demigod, but gets smacked away. After that, the demigod and demon lord engage in a fierce battle. The demon lord gains the advantage and is about to abduct the child, but Kumari comes to the rescue. The demon lord recovers and is about to kill her, but the demigod smashes his face and dominates the fight. Shady tries to stop the demigod, but fails as the demigod takes the demon lord into the well. Shady goes for the child now, but Kumari stabs his heart and kills him once and for all. Now, the demigod shows up and reveals that he has killed the demon lord, showing his tongue as proof. This lifts the curse off the sage, who finally dies in peace. The granny's narration resumes, and she says that Kumari became the new lord of Shady's village and brought prosperity back to the land. The movie ends with Kumari's baby wandering off into the demigod's forest, where he is greeted by Orphan Boy again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.